was a solid state diode. Uh, we had the tube diode, we had some very inefficient diodes in early radio called the cat's whisker and such as that. And we, we basically say a diode is a P-N junction, it's silicon, germanium. They had some other substances back in the 50s. We would put a dopant in these two sections and it would cause them to become a P-type and an N-type. And what would happen is if I forward bias it, current would flow. This is a symbol for a diode. These are what diodes look like. Here's some pictures of some diodes. It's a component that only allows current to flow in one direction. First solid state device. Here is a power supply. Remember we looked at the power supply before using the tube? Now we've got it with a solid state diode. Transformer, diode, outputs DC. Now we had to say that, you know, because this is not on all the time, the actual DC power level, if you filtered it, would be less than the peak. That's where you come up with the term root mean square and how to figure out how much DC you get out of an AC signal, trying to keep it simple. This is a bridge power supply. What I'm doing here is I'm taking four diodes to convert both waves and make them go in the same direction, converting AC into a full wave rectification. And you know what I'm going to do is, this is running out of time, I'm going to expand on these concepts on the web page. The purpose of a power supply is to turn DC into AC and, may, and drop the voltage to where it can be used by a device that doesn't require a full 110 volts. Let's come in here and let's see, here's our plug in the wall. And we're coming out of that we're going to a transformer. Iron core. And then we have a secondary. Less windings. Okay, this is 110 volts AC. And it's 60 CPS cycles per second. And we're stepping it down so this side's going to be 12 volts AC. That means here we're looking at a higher waveform. Over here we invert through transformers and the waveform is going to drop. So it's going to be smaller. This was from here to here uh, approximately 180 volts because we're doing peak to peak. This measurement is peak to peak. Right in here we're at about our RMS value and it's going to be 110 right here. So when that gets inverted we're going to actually have an RMS value not peak to peak value of around 12 volts AC. And so this is what's coming out of this point. I'm going to come here and I'm going to put a diode in. Electrons always flow into the, the arrow of a diode. And I'm going to come here and connect the other side of the transformer secondary to a ground. Now at this point we have AC here, but after the diode, since the diode only allows electrons to flow one direction, what we have is only DC. It's pulsating DC, but it's just DC. The next step is you want to do some filtering. And so let's put in a capacitor. Usually in this case, let's say this is a 12 volt, this would be a 1000 microfarad at maybe a 22 volt electrolytic capacitor. Uh, this would be the positive side and that would go to ground. And so now we filtered it and so if this is zero volts then this is 12 volts DC. If we want to get fancier we can actually put in a device that's called a regulator. It's a, it's a uh, silicon device, solid state 
and it is designed to keep the voltage at exactly 12 volts DC. And so between here and ground, we could then power our transistor radio or whatever we wanted to. And that's a basic half wave power supply. Full wave bridge power supply. And in this case, we start off just like the half wave. We have our power coming in from our AC plug. We then want to go into our transformer. Sometimes we'd put this device in the circuit and that would be a fuse. It could go anywhere in this part here. We'll put in, this is a iron core transformer. This again is 110 volts and this is 12 volts coming out. Now when I go to draw a bridge I usually start this way. I take it and make a square on its corner and then I put my diodes in where they all point in one direction so they're all pointing this direction this direction over here and I continue the diodes pointing that same direction over here and over here remember the diode turns AC into DC now you'll notice we have the two cathodes of the diode here, two anodes there. Let's take and take that one to ground. And then this will be our positive output here. And then the transformer would connect at these points. To that bridge. Now with the halfway rectification we were only seeing one half, but what this does is it inverts the lower half into a positive direction, so the output would be like this, all going positive. And so we're going to put in a filter to ground. Remember, this ground and this ground are the same thing. And once it's filtered, we have DC, 12 volts, and then of course we can stick in a regulator. To make perfect DC. Now, let's just say that I have a little positive spike going to zero here, and then it goes positive, and then it goes to zero, and positive, and then going to zero, and then I have this one that stays at positive a lot longer, and then The on time here is significantly higher than the, or longer than the on time here. If I feed that through a capacitor and out, then when the capacitor filters it, this one that doesn't have as much on time is going to have a lower voltage with relationship to zero. It might be like four volts. Whereas this one that is on longer is going to have a higher voltage because when it's filtered 
is going to have an average that's higher as far as the on time. And so that's the way that switching power supply works. It modulates the on time to control the output voltage. What we switch mode block diagram. We were looking at the off and on time switching earlier and we saw that the amount of on time determined the voltage level once it was filtered by the capacitor to make more or less DC. Now when we're looking at the way that functions we have a, what's called a feedback that controls the voltage regulation. When I come in I have my feed from my wall power and it goes into the first block which would be the input rectifier it could also have a transformer in it as your needs are you know necessary to your needs and so this converts the AC into DC and then we go into our next block which is called the chopper and for instance we this is where the pulse would get modulated to be longer or shorter in height here and time duration to determine what the output DC would be then we would feed it to the next block which would be the output transformer this would take this feed and then it worked with the transformer to change the voltage or shift the voltage then we would take this output of that and feed it to a rectifier and filter and then we would have our output of DC let's say is 12 volts we would then take a sample of this and feed it back to another block which would be the controller and the controller would then feed back to the chopper so when this started to go higher than 12 volts DC over here then it would decrease the amount of on time to make the voltage go down if this started going lower than 12 volts to see over here it would then cause the length of the on time to increase therefore giving you a higher voltage